the citric acid cycle. This is a graphical representation of the citric acid cycle. It is cyclic in that its four carbon molecule, oxaloacetate, will go through the cyclic molecular process and end up back to oxaloacetate. It's a 10 step process and we identify those steps through the enzymes that helps facilitate that reaction. I've eliminated two of the steps, so I'm going to go through eight steps, and I'll point out the two steps that I've simply eliminated. You'll often see it like eight steps or sometimes ten steps. So if you remember, pyruvate is the ending product of glycolysis. Pyruvate will enter the mitochondria and be converted to acetyl-CoA. So the first step, citrate synthase, will help transfer two of the carbons from acetyl-CoA onto the four-carbon molecule oxaloacetate by losing a coenzyme A, it is converted to citrate. And citrate is acidic because it has three carboxyl groups on it, which is where we get two of its names, the citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. There's another name, the Krebs cycle, um, named after Hans Krebs. He was a Jewish German citizen who elucidated this mechanism, and he ended up fleeing Germany prior to World War II. So after citrate, we're going to have a dehydration. A water molecule is going to come out uh, yielding cis aconitate and then the water molecule will come back in to yield isocitrate. So basically I've eliminated the dehydration and the hydration. The, the, the purpose is to get citrate into its isomer, isocitrate, which is also a six carbon molecule. And here we have the, the rearrangement of this citrate to isocitrate helps prepare this molecule to, to, for step three so we can dehydrogenate it and decarboxylate it. So here, the enzyme in the third step, isocitrate dehydrogenase, will help oxidize isocitrate into alpha-ketoglutarate. The oxidized form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide will be reduced as it takes off the hydrogens, converting the NAD to NADH and we'll lose a carboxyl group off of isocitrate and that will come out as carbon dioxide. Now we have the five carbon molecule alpha-ketoglutarate. Now in the fourth step it is another dehydrogenation and another decarboxylation where alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex will decarboxylate, it will take off another carboxyl unit coming out as carbon dioxide and it will take off a couple hydrogens through the process of the uh, oxidized form of NAD, converting it to a NADH. Then the, that will yield succinyl-CoA. This is a four carbon molecule, succinyl-CoA. Now the fifth step, succinyl-CoA synthetase, is going to remove the coenzyme A and that will liberate some free energy where guanosine diphosphate will pick up the phosphate and add a guanosine triphosphate through that energy. Now the sixth step, succinate dehydrogenase, is another oxidation process where we will oxidize succinate to fumarate and flavin adenine dinucleotide will do the oxidizing of that as it is reduced to FADH2. And there we still have a four carbon molecule coming into the four carbon molecule fumarate. Now the seventh step, fumarase, will add in a water molecule onto the second and third carbon of fumarate yielding malate. Now the eighth step, malate dehydrogenase, it will dehydrogenase malate by taking off a couple hydrogens and thereby creating another reduced form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide yielding the oxaloacetate. Now the whole purpose of this citric acid cycle is to yield these coenzymes or these intermediate electron carriers that we can bring to the electron transport chain in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And the citric acid cycle will basically yield 30 ATPs. The first step in glucose, we, it took us it cost us two ATPs. And whenever we converted glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, um, we oxidized that and we reduced one NADH. So now we have, since it's two molecules of pyruvate, we have two NADHs. 
So we have a negative two ATPs, and we've gained uh, two NADHs. Now, like I said, for every NADH, that's equivalent to three ATPs once it goes through the electron transport chain. So let's count some beans. Two times three is six. So that will give us six ATPs once we get through the electron transport chain. And that's coming up, but I just want to um, uh, maintain the uh, count of the ATPs while it's kind of still fresh. And the good thing about videos, you can go back and look at what I was going over. So in, in the payback phase of glycolysis, we gained two ATPs and then another two ATPs, and that was a total of four ATPs. But four minus two will give us a net gain of two ATPs in glycolysis. And the two plus the six is eight. Now, in some tissues, this nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide it is going to cost us one ATP to get across the mitochondrial membrane. That's in some tissues, such as the brain and skeletal muscle. So that will cost one ATP for each NADH. So if you're having a total of six, then you can um, reduce that by two, and then it's four, and that four plus two ATPs is six. So that's where we come up with the difference between six to eight ATPs in glycolysis, and it depends on the tissue. Now, once we got pyruvate into the mitochondria, we converted that to acetyl-CoA, and we were able to reduce the oxidized form of NAD and get two NADHs. So here we have two, and again, one of these will equal three ATPs, so two times three is six ATPs. And everything, again, like I said, is doubled. So we had an NADH here, and we, you can go back and check this out. There's an NADH at each one of these points. So that's two, four, six. Six NADHs in total for, each, uh, for two revolutions of this cycle because there's two molecules of pyruvate. So that is six, and again, they, each one yields three ATPs. So three times six is 18 ATPs. And this uh, guanosine triphosphate is equal to a, an ATP. So that, there you'll get two ATPs there. And this FADH is equal to two ATPs in these uh, electron transport chains. So here we have two of them. So two times two is four. That's four ATPs. So the net gain in the citric acid cycle is 30 ATPs. And the total ATPs for these uh, glycolysis and the citric acid cycle is 36 to 38. And the discrepancy here is because of these two that will cost us to get NADH across the mitochondria in some of the tissues. So that's counting the ATP.